Hey, it's Steve. One thing that Bruce Lee was good at was breaking martial arts down to the essentials and letting go of the superfluous aspects and the fancy moves. And when he was asked what the core essence of martial arts was, he basically broke it down to just two things, uh, which he could refer to as the yin and the yang, or as attack and defense, so offense and defense. And when he thought of martial arts in those terms, it actually helped him make some breakthroughs in that he could learn to attack and defend at the same time. So he could do offense and defense together. When he would block, he would also strike at the same time, sometimes even with the same, same hand or arm. And uh, I began thinking about this idea of you know, boiling things down to the core essence. And I love that idea of offense and defense, how both are essential. And you can even do both at the same time. And I started thinking about how could I apply this idea to productivity? I often make a lot of gains in personal growth by taking ideas from one field and then transplanting them into a different field. In this case, you know, taking ideas from martial arts and seeing how I could transplant them into productivity. And so I began thinking of what's the analogy between you know, offense and defense? How does that apply to productivity? So offense, I thought, is, is it's the forward movement. It's pursuing our goals. It's working on our priorities. What matters to us in the moment? What do we need to be doing? It's taking action, so direct, forward-moving action. And if we only do that and we don't defend against problems, then we run into difficulties, much in the same way of if in martial arts you only attack and you never defend. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get hurt. And that is indeed what happens in terms of productivity. What is the thing that we need to defend against? Well, I would say it's distractions. We have to avoid whatever is going to pull us away from the tasks that we want to be doing, from the focus that we want to have. What's taking us off focus? That could be something internal. It could be negative emotions that are rising up. It could be feelings of stress. It could be something external. It could be distractions from other people like uh, social media. It could be people interrupting us, text messages coming in. There can be all sorts of distractions, internal and external, that can pull us off of focus. And if we don't have any way of defending against them, we run into problems. Well, if you think about it though, for every type of problem that might arise, you could see it as if it's attack coming from an opponent. So somebody is trying to attack you and you have to defend against that. So for every move, there's a counter move. And for every distraction, there's a remedy for it. There's a way to prevent that, is, that distraction from happening. There's a way to stop yourself from being distracted by social media. There's a way to stop yourself from having to deal with internal emotions. Now, sometimes you can come up with overly complicated solutions but ideally, if you just think of what is the essence of this problem, what is really the issue here, then you can come up with some you know, simple, simple ways of dealing with that. For negative emotions, there are a wide, wide variety of approaches for turning a ne negative emotion into a positive state within seconds or minutes. I've written about many of these on my blog. Uh, if you have to deal with internet-based distractions, there are lots of apps and tools that can block selective sites that are problematic for you, or you can even just move away from the internet itself. If you unplug, that's a solution. Ideally, what you want to do, though, is just as Bruce Lee had to practice making his defense and offense work simultaneously, we have to do the same thing. We have to integrate defense as a habit. We have to get into the habitual routine of doing the things that will naturally not just defend against attacks to our productivity, to our happiness, uh, to our sanity, but also prevent those problems from happening in the first place. So in martial arts, if you can uh, defend against a punch, you know, with a counter move, that's great. But ideally, you want to prevent the punch from landing in the first place. Uh, so it's, it's even better, you know, when you apply this to productivity and you think about all the rich ways we can actually prevent ourselves from falling off focus. One simple habit I do, for instance, is I I read a list of goals that I have for myself for the current quarter each morning. It's how I often like to start my day. Within the first hour of the day, I read over my goals and I just have them printed out on a piece of paper and I just read them. And then I also do a little check-in with myself. Like, how am I doing with these goals? This quarter I have about 10 goals and I just look at each of them and I think, okay, am I making progress on this one? And I can see like, okay, one of them's already done, four of them I'm advancing pretty well, and the other five or so I'm going to work on a little bit later in the quarter. So it's, it's a daily check-in with myself. That helps with staying focused. 
And it also helps with preventing distractions because one of the ways I, I get distracted and many other people do is that we lose sight of our goals. So if I just do that daily check-in each morning, that helps me stay connected with, our, with the goals that I've set for myself. And so it's a way of kind of doing offense in that it helps me focus on what I wanna be doing, especially that day, but it also practices defense. It, it avoids the problem of losing sight of the goals. With habits, we often think, I just wanna install this new habit. If I can get this new habit going, great. But what is derailing the habit? What's preventing it from sticking? A lot of times we don't do a good job of addressing that. Suppose you wanna become an early riser. I like getting up at 5 a.m. every morning. I've been doing that pretty consistently. And when I get up at 5 a.m., it's a beautiful, wonderful start to my day. It's something I really like leaning into. Uh, and I wanted to have this habit for years. I'm not always 100% consistent about it. Lately, I've been very consistent with it, and I love it. And one of the things I found that helps me become more consistent is when I have a better strategy for defending against whatever is going to knock me off of that habit. The main thing that will, kn will knock you off an early riser habit is staying up too late. So what's the defense against staying up too late? Partly for me, what works best is just to have a good reframe. I tell myself anything after 10 p.m. for getting to bed is late. And so if I see, you know, and I set also a timer on my watch to remind me when to go to bed. So my watch starts buzzing and it's a reminder, okay, that's my trigger. I better start shutting down, going to bed. You can even do some internet blocking too selectively because some people find that the internet distracts them. So if you just set, a, set up um, an automated internet blocking tool, like I use an app called Freedom, and you can just set it for automatically a certain range of time, say like 9 to 10 p.m., it switches off the internet for you. So you can't be distracted by internet stuff during that time. And when you get into the habit of using these tools and you just set up the right counter moves and you make them habitual, then it helps you get into bed uh, at the right time. And so you're not constantly falling you know, out of um, sync with your desired habits. What if you wanna have a clutter-free space? Well, you can declutter. That's a proactive you know, action-oriented move. That's your offense, whatever you, whatever you see that's clutter, you clean it up. But what are you gonna do to defend against clutter returning? Where are the risks? What creates the clutter in the first place? What moves are the clutter, uh, what moves is the, is the clutter doing that is bringing problems up into your life? Where's the clutter coming from in the first place? The main reason clutter comes about is you haven't assigned a home to, to everything that uh, come, comes into your place. And so if you have a way, a system for processing things that come into your home, how do you, you know, you have to think about where am I gonna put this thing? Where do, what do I, where do I uh, put this uh, item as its permanent home? And when you've selected a permanent home for everything, you can just remind yourself, okay, where does this go? What is its home? And when you know you don't have enough homes for things, then you start having to declutter more. Uh, so if you get into the habit of always assigning a home for things, like where, where is the home base for this item? That's a good defensive strategy for, for, for uh, preventing clutter. Just always ask, what's the, what's the home base for this item? Uh, you know, the solution here is really to prepare and practice defense regularly. Notice what is cluttering up your life. Notice what's knocking your habits away from where you wanna go. Notice what's distracting you and unfocusing you. And see those as problems that have solutions, that have counter moves. Um, what blocks and distracts you, um, if you solve that, it can help you stay more focused. When you prevent bad habits, it can also help, help uh, when you prevent bad habits, it can also help you establish better ones. When you defend against clutter, you end up with a clutter-free space if you do it well enough. So think not just about advancing forward, but also think about how you're going to defend against the problems that arise. And ideally look for those simple, elegant counter moves to the moves that reality might make to clutter up your life, you know, that other people might make to distract you, that might even arise internally from within yourself. And, and ask yourself, what's the counter move for this? What's an intelligent way to, to, to practice against this? And just as Bruce Lee, was very experimental. You need to be experimental too. You need to test things and try them out. He would try out his ideas and his moves in actual combat. And if it didn't work, then he would adjust. And it's important for us to do the same thing. If your moves are not working for you, if your counter moves are failing, don't keep doing the same counter move. Okay, that's foolish. That would be foolish in combat. It's also foolish in productivity. 
find a different counter move, come up with something different, uh, especially something simpler. Sometimes we make our counter moves overly complicated. And what may seem like an extreme counter move, like working completely offline on no devices, just using pen and paper, sometimes is the most elegant solution to avoid lots of distractions. So uh, I hope you find this um, topic interesting. It's one that's um, been arising for me a lot lately, really thinking about how I can defend against problems and just solve problems that arise. And I've been doing a really good job of this lately, and I've noticed that as I just tick off solutions and good counter moves for each kind of problem that may arise to knock me off track with my desired habits or to defocus me and distract me, that what I get is a nice flow of productivity. And uh, just as it, this, this idea worked for Bruce Lee, I encourage you to try this for yourself as well and see what it does for you. Take care.